let us discuss some important topics for UPSC 2022. Okay, so we are going to take up some topics that can be part of the examination this year. So yes, a uh, very important topic, uh, topic from exams point of view, cryptocurrency. Okay, so cryptocurrency is, has been in news over all over the year now. And let us discuss cryptocurrency, its regulation and future. So uh, recently in the budget 2022 and 23, okay, the government of India has announced that its central bank will start issuing a digital currency. Very, very important. Okay. So this digital currency will be released as early as 2022 and 23. So it is one uh, crucial decision that most major economies are refusing to make in a hurry and India has taken a step forward. So what are the arguments uh, in favor of digital rupee um, claim that an electronic representation of India's legal tender is going to boost its digital economy, right? So however, it is also important to evaluate the risk that are being associated with this hasty tradition. So you will see that many people are calling this decision as very hasty that government has taken up this decision in haste and the government should have thought before coming out with this digital con uh, currency concept okay uh, so central bank digital currency okay cbdc so uh, india's own digital currency what is a digital rupee if i talk about so the rbi will issue the digital currency in the next physical uh, in the next fiscal which will be called digital rupee okay so central bank digital currency uh, it uses an electronic record okay or digital token so basically, uh, the main purpose to represent the virtual form of a fiat currency of a particular nation or a region, we can say. So the digital rupee will allow the users, okay, all the users so that they can transfer their purchasing power from the deposit accounts, okay, into the smartphone wallets, okay. So in the form of online tokens, this is going to take place, uh, which like cash uh, will be automatically a liability of the RBI. So the digital rupee will be like banknotes min uh, minus ATMs. So there are certain arguments uh, that are coming in favor of this digital currency. The, so basically they are saying the cbdc the basic aim is to bring in the best of both worlds the convenience and the security of digital forms like cryptocurrencies okay and the regulated it's, it's a more of a regulative reserve backed money circulation of the traditional banking system okay also uh, in favor of this uh, there is a response that it will mitigate the risk of losses that indian depositors face when they are dealing with the commercial banks okay so it will be more safer and then e currency could keep the notion of convertibility grounded in daily reality and it is going to eliminate the need for an expensive network. So what are the arguments against the digital currency? You will see that many are saying that it's a, uh, that a weaker banks may start struggling to retain low cost deposits. Okay. And lenders may be reluctant to shed their loan assets. And um, the other uh, uh, response that is coming is that uh, central banks will be able to trace the spending okay so unlike perfectly anonymous cash most cbds will be designed in such a way that uh, central banks will be able to trace the spendings so for cryptocurrencies you need to remember such concepts so why the rush for digital currency is coming up and what is the way forward okay so you can remember this concept uh, very, very important from prelims perspective, cryptocurrency, you can remember the name of a cryptocurrency. So it was also part of your uh, prelims paper cryptocurrency back uh, in the, I think, four or five years back. So a major topic. So you need to keep your notes handy for this particular topic. So let's move to the next topic. And yes, of course, the another major important topic is the US, Russia, Ukraine war. OK, so here is the map. Uh, you need to remember the location black sea caspian sea right so they are all important from the exams uh, point of view so location of black sea the country is bordering it uh, bordering it caspian sea russia right or uh, the location of georgia crimea and ukraine okay ukraine for sure so from map perspective if i talk about so map is very very important if you are studying russia ukraine war and uh, a little uh, concept that what it is this Russia uh, and Ukraine war. So basically, uh, 
this is a cause of conflict is the balance of power bop so what was the major issue that led to this russia ukraine war so basically the major issue was ukraine's urge to join nato okay um so basically nato's and ukraine's joining of nato made russia more uh i would say that come up with this particular war so nato's expansion actually violated uh, violated the promises that were made prior to the breakup of the soviet union okay and the ukraine's accession to nato would cross russia's red lines okay so russia stands uh, says that ukraine's accession to nato it is going to cause red lines and that nato's strategic posture poses a continuing security threat for russia okay so ukraine crisis was justified by russian president on what grounds that uh, for security interest we are doing it and the rights of ethnic russians in former soviet republics so what russia wants russia wants an assurance from the west that ukraine will never be able to join nato okay so the us and its western allies they are refusing to bar ukraine from nato claiming it as a sovereign country and ukraine is free to choose its own security alliance so this is the basically uh, the main issue so what what has been india's stand on this issue so india did not join the western powers condemnation of russia's intervention in crimea and kept a low profile on the issue yes so india's stand has been this so if i talk about uh, in the year 2020 november 2020 india voted against a ukraine sponsored revolution in the un that condemned alleged human rights violation in crimea thereby backing old ally russia on the issue okay so india is not going against russia and india is one of the countries who has abstained to vote against russia okay so a lot of things over here so for the exam point of view you can remember the map right and uh, india stand you can remember the geography and the nearby locations so uh, you can also remember for this particular topic the the current scenario okay so the conflict is now the largest attack by one state on another in us since the second world war okay and first since the balkan conflict in the 1990 so with invasion of ukraine's uh, agreements which were signed like minsk protocol of 2014 and russia nato act of 1997 they all stand but voided okay so you can remember uh, this also minsk protocol what was it and uh, russia nato act of 19 97 okay so g7 nations they have also condemned russia's invasion of ukraine and talking about china china has rejected calling russia's move on ukraine and invasion right so this is all things that you can remember from the exam point of view thank you uh, now let's move to the next topic so another important topic is the covid 19 vaccination right so india has administered over 180 crore covid vaccine doses okay and um, including over 9 crore doses in age group 15 to 17 and over 2 crore precaution doses so for this you can remember the objectives of mission covid suraksha okay uh, mission covid suraksha right so this is one mission that you can remember and what are the main objectives of this mission okay uh, it uh, includes funding the candidate vaccines with their testing manufacturing licensing and distribution in the market and establishing clinical trial sites strengthening the existing laboratories and assisting with the internal and external quality management system so the development of a suitable target product profile is another key element of the mission covid suraksha so you can remember this so what are the community doses that are administered across the country okay as of march 16 2022 a recent new so uh, partially vaccinated fully vaccinated around 95.52% of the people are uh, partially vaccinated fully vaccinated percentage is 80.65 with precautionary booster doses number also you can see over here okay so for, uh, whenever you are studying covid 19 vaccines you can also you know keep a note of the candidates for covid 19 vaccine okay so one is your sputnik 
V and uh, if I talk about Sputnik V, it's named after the first artificial earth satellite Sputnik 1. Okay, so it is the first vaccine to be have been approved and ready to use. So it was registered by Russia. Second is Covaxin, uh, an Indian vaccine and has been developed by Bharat Biotech. Okay. So, it was developed in collaboration with the ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. Then uh, you can remember ZCOVD, right? So, this Indian vaccine has been developed by pharmaceutical company named Zydus. So, this vaccine, it has been developed in association with National Biopharma Mission and Department of Biotechnology. So, you can remember this whenever you're studying vaccine, the news that keeps on coming right the different types of vaccine and uh, what are mrna vaccine what are traditional vaccines so this will give you more clarity of the concept and very easy to remember also so one more topic uh, the world's oldest cave paintings have been discovered in indonesia okay so archaeologists have discovered the world's oldest known animal cave painting and that too in indonesia which country indonesia so it is a painting of a wild pig and uh, it has believed that it was drawn around 45,500 uh, years ago so you can see that it is found in the remote valley on the island of Sulawesi. So cave topic is here in the news. So you need to remember a lot of things. So Munal paintings and cave paintings you can remember. And uh, if I talk about Ajanta paintings, they become important over here. So you need to remember uh, these facts. Bagh and Badami cave paintings, the paintings from Bagh caves in Madhya Pradesh, okay, uh, correspond to those paintings of Ajantas in cave number one and two. So this is one topic that has been in news in limelight. So whenever you're studying this particular topic, like cave painting, so definitely one area is Indonesia, where the other is from the Indian perspective, you can remember uh, the prehist uh, prehistoric era art, you can uh, rock painting, so Bhimka caves uh, and Jogimara caves, so where you can find prehistoric paintings. So paintings, uh, important topic, so you can just have some notes handy for you. Okay, now let's move to the next topic. So another topic uh, in news is that the World Heritage Tag has been given for Kakataya Rudreshwara Temple. So World Heritage Tag. What is World Heritage Tag? When I talk about the World Heritage Tag, so what is this World uh, Heritage Tag? So basically, a World Heritage Site is a place, okay, that is listed by UNESCO for its special cultural or physical significance, okay. So cultural and or rather we can say or physical significance so the list of world heritage site is maintained by whom the international world heritage program which is administered by the unesco world heritage committee committee okay so basically unesco it seeks to encourage the identification and protection of the culture and the natural heritage around the world which is considered to be the outstanding value of humanity so you need to remember how many world heritage sites are there in india currently okay so what is the number what is the exact number if i talk about so around 40 sites are there right so you can remember the names and uh, india has 40 world heritage sites okay so as of uh, from the year 2022 i'm talking now uh Rudra, Rudrishwara temple, it was considered in 1213 AD, okay, during the reign of Kakataya Empire by Rajvela Rudra. And who was he? He was a general of Kakataya King Ganapati Deva. So, Rudreshwara temple, location of Rudreshwara temple becomes important over here. So, you need to, you know, uh, know it where it is. And it is also known as Rudreshwara Lord Shiva temple. Okay. And in which state it is? Yes. In the state of Telangana. So, state becomes all more important. And it lies in a valley of Lam Palampet village of Venkatpur Mandal of Mulugu districts okay so and uh, it has been regarded as the 39th world heritage site okay so you can remember uh, this particular topic and other sites as well so location of the temple it's very very important and the architecture you can remember so the foundation you will see it is built with the sandbox technique what is the technique that has been used sandbox technique okay So thank you. We have just covered some of the important topics that have that can be asked in UPSC. 
uh, exam 2022. Thank you.